Hey guys, this is MJ. It is truly locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today than it ever, ever was. Guys, get excited today. Tootsie is watching and waiting. My sweet, sweet little girl is watching and waiting. My husband got me the sweetest thing for Mother's Day. It is a um, bird cage. I don't, I'm not a bird cage. Um, the birds that actually can come right up to the window. I don't know if you can see it or my hand is in the way, but but it's so cool. The birds just come right up there. Bird feeder, not a bird cage. Anyway, um, I hope you guys are having a fabulous day despite opposition, despite resistance. Um, we have to push through, guys. Okay, we have to push through on these days that we feel like, uh, kind of feels like quicksand some days, doesn't it? Kind of feels like mud, you know? We're born into this condition called mud. I like to call it the mud puddle sin. And even though we're not um, consciously sinning or anything, we're just stuck, okay? That's why I am so an advocate of journaling, guys. So um, I hope you guys are on board with journaling. I really, really do because it is one of the most greatest tools that the Holy Spirit has used in these 30 plus years in my life to bring things to light that I would not have normally seen um, and didn't want to see. Actually, that's why I buried it. So um, the Holy Spirit brings that up. That's called sanctification. I'm going to share a little bit out of my own journal and from my second book, My Poetic Justice, in my journal. Um, and I'm coming to the end of this journal. I only have a few pages left. Um, but... First, I want to share the gospel with you guys because we are in the final moments, guys. We are in some late, late minutes, nanoseconds. So if you don't know what I mean by being born again, you need to listen to this because this is basically just housekeeping because if you're not in the house, you're not going in the rapture, okay? Everyone who is a prodigal even will go in that rapture because there is no partial rapture. The rapture is when Jesus Christ descends into those clouds. The dead in Christ rise first. And we, this final generation, I believe, who are alive and remain, will be harpazo, caught up with them just in the nick of time. God just snatches us out of the way before the seven-year tribulation. And guys, it is being set up. Normal is not coming back ever. Jesus Christ is coming back for his church it is written. It has all been prophesied. It is in the word of God. Okay. So if you don't know what I'm talking about by being born again, Jesus said that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That the only way to the father is through the son. It's not about religion. It's not about church. We are the church. It's not about a brick and mortar church. It is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is that bridge into the presence of a holy God, our Father. Okay, so it's not Buddha, Muhammad, uh, the prayers of our ancestors. It's not any reincarnation. So whatever fill-in-the-blank uh, way that you think that you're going to get to heaven, um, the only way to heaven, the only name under heaven on earth which we can be saved is Jesus Christ. So the gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again, according to scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. Okay, I know that people complicate it. I know that we complicate it in our own flesh. But the Bible says that we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the free gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. So we don't get to heaven by good works, okay? And we don't get to heaven by getting saved and then doing good works to maintain our salvation. We don't maintain our salvation. We don't sustain our salvation because nothing we ever did in the first place got us that free gift of salvation. So how do we get that free gift? A is to simply admit that, yes, I am a sinner in need of a savior, 
Um, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not some of us, all of us. B is to believe, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And C, call upon his name. Simple as that. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not might be saved. Okay, guys, so if you're listening to me and you are within the sound of my voice and you're not saved, born again, you need to repent, which means to simply come to Jesus. You change your mind. Repent is metanoia in the Greek. Okay, metanoia simply means change your mind. You change your mind about who God is and God will change your heart because there is only one God, only one way into heaven. Okay, and that is Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus Christ, the atoning sacrifice, he took our sins he was innocent, okay? We weren't innocent. We were born guilty, okay? He was born of a virgin, lived a perfect, sinless, spotless life for 33 years, was crucified, buried, resurrected, and is currently seated at the right hand of the Father. And in a nanosecond, could happen before this video is over, is coming back for his church, his bride. All over this world okay so let's get that out of the way all right because you don't want to be left behind you can still get saved during the tribulation and the tribulation is a cashless society one world government aka the great reset uh, one world religion which is in Abu Dhabi right now they've got you know the three different houses <sighs> guys uh, transhumanism everything is set up everything is set up for this fourth industrial revolution, all right? You don't wanna be here. So um, call on the name of the Lord today. He will save you, he will rescue you, he will deliver you, and he will walk with you, even in your darkest nights, okay? All right, so, you know, I've had a few people, today's is gonna be about journaling, okay? Because the Lord has been putting on my heart. Somebody had asked me the question, so how do you journal? If you're not on board with this journaling, I pray that you do get on board because I get a lot of comments of how awesome the Lord is working in the lives of those who've chosen to journal. Okay, and journal, you just give God a blank page, you know. I mean, you just get a journal. You could get um, whatever you, you know. I like I go to Ross. I like to, uh, you know, something pretty across or whatever. I don't know. You could use you could use a tablet. You could use whatever. I just prefer to use something pretty when I sit down with my Bible and. I don't know, you know, that's how we work. That's how we work, you know, sometimes. But anyway, and then I put, it's not in this one, but I usually put a picture of me when I was a child so that when I see myself, when I open that and I see myself, I see myself as God sees me innocent. Although even as a child, I wasn't innocent, you know, but we look at the innocence of a child and we see what God sees when he looks at us. God sees the perfection, the innocence of his son. And the accomplishment that nothing else needs to be fulfilled. It is finished. Okay. Because we sometimes judge ourselves so harshly and we're saved. Okay. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, not of works lest any man should boast. But don't we um, harshly judge ourselves sometime? And, you know, I should have done this and I should have done that. And when I hear somebody say that, I say, don't should on yourself. And I try not to should on myself. All right. Because... There's nothing we can do to change the past. Nothing. So we are living in the present, in present time. All right. What I try to do is each day, you know, open my Bible with um, my journal present. I open my journal, you know, and I give the Lord, I surrender and say, Lord, okay, whatever you, whatever I need to see today, I give him the floor. Okay, today is yours. Obviously, it is his. He created it. It's his day. Um, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. But I open my journal and I say, okay, Lord, um, it's me and you. Where do you want me to go in the word? Sometimes he'll have me meditate on a scripture, like be still and know that I am God. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want you know, sometimes I look up those words in the Hebrew, want, shepherd, um, you know, 
he'll take me in different directions. So, because I'm so scattered anyway, you know, so only the Lord, trust me, knows how our hearts work and how our minds work. So individually, he customizes it. Okay, that journaling experience. So I can't tell you, this is how you do, you know, this is, he uses a blank slate. Okay, so we've got this blank slate. And last night I was sitting, um, I was just sitting here and somebody had asked me, I was reading the comments and I love y'all's comments, by the way, that to me is true fellowship. I love to read your comments. Um, and I try to get back to as many as I can. Um, but it gets, it gets kind of crazy, but thank you for commenting and, and sharing. And thank you for praying for my prodigal. Thank you for praying for my family and know that I am praying for you and yours daily and your prodigal. And we must remember that we walk by faith not by sight, because sight will trip us up. Um, we don't look at circumstances. We look at the power and ability of our God. Okay, so last night I was just kind of sitting here and I was like, Lord, how can I explain journaling? You know, because journaling has been truly an act of worship. Um, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of our Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise. It's, it's like a sacrifice of praise for me, okay? So into the house of the Lord. You know, we know that we are the house of the Lord. Our building, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he wants the Holy Spirit, when we get saved, he moves in eternally and immediately. All right, so he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So he wants us to be encouraged on a daily basis. So... In trying to explain journaling, I sat here and I was just like, the Lord gave me the awesomest thing. It was, it's called Chasing Monsters, okay? And it's basically letting the broken walls speak. We know that walls don't have a voice, right? But the walls within our soul, the walls that we build brick by brick, they do have a voice because we built them. <laughs> We put them there. Insecurity, because of insecurity and fear. You know, I built my wall so high that, yeah, others couldn't get in. But I built my brick wall so high that I couldn't get out. Okay, the real me I'm talking about. Yeah, of course I had, you know, a false identity, cocaine cowgirl, whatever, you know, back in the day. And, you know, a false identity that the enemy delighted that I embraced because that's not who I was. Only God knows who you truly are in your deepest heart of hearts. Man looks at the outside, God looks at the heart. And he sees why we do what we do, why we built those walls brick by brick. And only he can take them out a brick at a time. So we have to trust him, be vulnerable enough to trust him, to touch that pain. And I, for some of us, the pain, there's, there's, there's been a lot of childhood pain. There's been a lot of pain in our past, you know, marriages, whatever it might be. Um, and we don't even know that we've anesthetized that and covered it up and, you know, it's growing dirt and flowers and weeds on top of it. We don't even know what's there. That's why I love the beauty of journaling because the Holy Spirit shows up and says, oh, look what I found. He illuminates those critical areas in our soul that we need to see in order to walk um, in liberty, in true liberty. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Okay, so, and it's painful sometimes. You know, it's, it's painful a lot of time to see that bitterness or the anger or whatever it may be, hurt, grief. Grief is a big one, okay? Because a lot of us haven't walked through the grief, we walk around it, fly on top of it, but we never walk through the grief. And you know, I know that we're new creations created in Christ um, for good works, that God created in Christ for good works, that God prepared from the foundations of this earth. But a lot of our past keeps us from those good works. And remember, we're not saved by those good works. We're saved for those good works. The book of Ephesians 2.10, I think it is. We are his poema, which I found was fascinating. We are his poem. 
in the Greek, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared before the foundations of this earth. But you know the enemy doesn't want you to find those good works and walk in them. The enemy doesn't want the gospel shared. Okay, He wants you to think that you're a complete and utter failure stupid, idiotic. You don't have the ability to share the gospel. You know, sharing the gospel is the Holy Spirit. Okay. We just get out of the way and he just taps on our heart. You know, sharing the gospel is not something that we should ever, ever be ashamed of. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. The enemy doesn't want you to share the gospel. So when our own fears and insecurities get in the way of sharing the gospel, that's when the Holy Spirit wants to do that work that's necessary, that housekeeping, so that we can open our mouth, which I don't have a problem opening my mouth. Sometimes I say the wrong things, but open our mouth and set the prisoners free. Okay, we don't set the prisoners free. The Holy Spirit will plant those seeds <clears throat> that will inevitably set those prisoners free. We plant the seeds, somebody else waters them, and God gives the increase. Okay, so last night I was sitting here, I don't know, and I thought it was pretty cool what I wrote. Um, of course, I was asking the Holy Spirit, so it's all glory to him. Chasing monsters. Okay, something to write about. I'm thinking, okay, people are asking me, so what do I write about? We're on the letter E. Okay, you can write on everlasting, eager, you know, eager to start journaling, um, embrace, whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit gives you that starts the letter E. I change the letter every Sunday. You can have multiple words. Um, mine was eyewitness. You know, the Holy Spirit has always been an eyewitness to everything that has happened in our life. And he wants to show us. He's eager to show us what happened so that, you know what, this is why you're this way. And this is why you've put up um, these picket fences. This is why you've put up these unhealthy boundaries or not at all. You haven't put up any boundaries. Um, and the, the way that you, your lifestyle was and the environment you grew, in, grew up in is why this is why you currently do this. So that's what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal. <clears throat> so something to write about. You just sit there and let the Holy Spirit speak. And trust me, he'll show you. If the walls could talk when I was five, what what would they say? How about 10? Were they watching me even when I prayed? If those walls could talk, would they dial 911 as they watched me fall when they saw me run? If these walls could talk, would they tell my tell of my fears as I pulled up the covers over my head to hide my tears? <clears throat> no, silly one, walls can't talk, but let's give them a voice. Someone was watching it all when you weren't given a choice. Let the performance begin. Settle in and take a seat. We're chasing monsters out the door. Let these broken walls speak. Okay, so, of course, they weren't the four walls in our house when we were little. All right? They weren't the walls that stood up in a brick and mortar house. They were the walls in our own temple. And we perceived things as children. We received things even as children that weren't truth about ourselves, about the world around us, about God. Okay, what did we think about God when we were five? What did our parents tell us about God? Um, what did we perceive? Well, I perceived, I know what I perceived. You know, God, you weren't watching, okay? You weren't there. Because if you were there, and if there was a God, you would not have allowed any of this to happen. You would not have allowed this to take place in my life. If there were a loving God, it's not if, there is a loving God. But as a child, because God did not intervene, in the situations that we were in, we came to the conclusion, there is no God. There's not a God that loves me personally. Well, the fact of the matter is, there is a God that loves us personally. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever 
should believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, there is a loving God that gave himself completely and eternally for us, but there is an enemy. Okay, and man is given a free will, and a lot of us have been affected by a man's free will. Okay, someone that is not dedicated to Christ, someone who is not surrendered to Christ, and their free will took advantage of an innocent victim, a child. Okay, and that's just sin in their life, unrestrained sin. All right, that touched us. Okay, and so that sin in their life that touched us, God was watching it all. All right, and the greatest gift that God has ever given to mankind is free will. God will not violate our free will. Unfortunately for a lot of us, as me, when I was a child, I was affected by man's free will. And because of that, I was a victim in my own head, in my own soul, in my own emotions, a prisoner for many years, locked away in the cellar of my own soul, perceiving that there isn't a God at all, that there is no God of love. If there were a God, he would have intervened. He wouldn't have allowed this to happen. Okay, so you understand where I'm coming from? So one good thing to write about and journal is the people in your life who have passed, your perception of that. Why did God take this person from my life? That question you have to get out because we personalize death. Jesus came. He is alive. He is the resurrection, guys. Okay, there is no death for us. We are eternally secure, okay? We are born again, all right? We are, the people who have died in Christ, the Christians who have died, they are immediately with the Lord because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So although their body may have died at the, resurre at the rapture, which is the glorification of their bodies, when that trumpet sounds, the Bible says the dead in Christ rise first. Those who are in the ground, their bodies, their spirits are already with him. Um, the dead in Christ rise first. And we who are alive and remain, this final generation, I believe, are harpazo caught up with them immediately in those clouds. And eternally, we are with the Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words. Encourage one another as we see the day approaching. Okay? And we should be excited because everything that's going around in this world right now, Israel, what's going on? Pray for the peace of Israel. Okay? Everything that is going on, wars and rumors of war, uh, the pestilence, these new pestilences that are coming out, lawlessness, people walking into short stores, malls, just all out shooting. Um, all of this is happening the perversion is off the charts. Um, it's all written, guys. It's all written in the word. All right? It is prophesied that this would happen. Matthew 24, Jesus was speaking to his disciples when he said, when they said, well, how will we know when it's the end of the world? Well, the rapture isn't the end of the world. Okay? There's the rapture and then there's a second coming when we come back with Christ seven years later. You don't want to be here during the seven-year tribulation. Okay, when all of this happens, you want to be out of here celebrating the wedding supper of the Lamb. Okay, you want that's where you want to be. That's where I want to be, and that's where I will be. Okay, and um, we are not appointed to wrath, by the way. The church is not appointed to wrath because Jesus Christ took the full punishment for our sin on that cross. So when he said to tell us that it is finished, it was finished for the whole wide world. Okay, and for those of us who said, I do to the invitation, okay? Those of us who are engaged, married to Jesus Christ, he is the groom, we are the bride of Christ, we're out of here, okay? I've heard it said that God does not, uh, Jesus won't let his wife be beaten. He's not a wife beater, and that's true. Why would he put us through the tribulation? Okay, why would we need to go through the tribulation? To learn something that we didn't learn yet or to suffer the consequences of our sin? Uh, like I used to believe in purgatory when I was Catholic. No, 
I said, no, Jesus did it all on the cross when he said, it is finished to tell us die. We have to believe that. And we have to be waiting, watching and waiting. Jesus says, lift up your head and look up for your redemption draws nigh. And encourage one another as we see the day approaching. What day? Not Surely he didn't say encourage one another as you see the day approaching where you're going to get your head cut off. Because that's what's going to happen during tribulation if you don't take the mark of the beast. Okay? Um, you can't buy or sell or eat nothing without taking the mark of the beast. If you hear this and it's after the rapture, don't take the mark of the beast. Whatever you do, don't take it. I know that everything is going to be scrubbed from the internet. But don't take the mark of the beast. Okay, not to eat, starve first. Have your head cut off first because life is eternal. Okay, and you will spend it somewhere, heaven or hell. All right, so I want to share with you guys from my Poetic Justice. This is called Let's, oh, this is called Walk This Way. And I just want to say that all of the poems mostly are from my own journaling experience that the Lord has shown me. Um, they're aha moments that God gave me that <clears throat> I'm sure that you can benefit from because it's all of us. We carry this this stuff inside, deep inside that has us try to, the enemy gets us so much to try to perceive that God does not care about us. God does not love you. God does not have anything for you to do because why would God use you, okay? All of that garbage, when you hear that stuff, those are lies from the liar. Satan is the liar and the father of all lies. So when you hear that kind of conversation going on, know that you're not talking to yourself. The enemy's talking to you. Everything that you think is not your thought. I know that's profound, but it's true. When God showed me that, everything you think is not your own thought, I thought, wow. Okay. Cast down all evil imaginations that exalt themselves against the who God is and bring into captivity all of those thoughts that you know aren't true. Like, ah, oh, who are you? God's never going to use you. That is all opposing opposite of what the Bible says of who we are in Christ. So, you know, that's the enemy. He's trying to just throw these things out. And you know what we do? We, we pick them up hook, line and sinker. We buy the lie, get rid of the lies. That can be your journaling experience. The Holy Spirit exposes the lies of the enemy. Okay? So, this is called Walk This Way. And this is like the Holy Spirit talking or, you know, Jesus talking to me. And a lot of my poetry and a lot of my writing is as if the Lord is talking to me because I just surrender to him, sit at his feet, and he starts talking. And that's what he will do. You know, he has a voice. Okay? My sheep hear my voice. They listen to the voice of no other. So he is the good shepherd. He does have a voice. He does speak. All right. Let's take a walk in the woods, all alone, you and I. Hold my hand and trust me as I gently expose the enemy's lie. I was in that day in your childhood, for I am not bound by space or time. Although you weren't aware of my presence, I was there during that horrible crime. Your cries touched heaven, my child. You were never, ever alone. I sent my angels to minister to you with special orders from the throne. I knew that your heart would grow bitter, that for years I'd receive your blame. I knew that a root would be planted, tarnishing your soul with hatred and shame. I also saw the lives, I also saw the lives that you would one day reach, all grown up and fully confident with a true passion to minister and teach. Yes, Satan meant to sift you like wheat. He delighted in watching you fall. Your knees were dirty, but you dusted yourself off, vowing to never trust in me at all. How could God allow this, he whispered daily in your ear. A God of love, he calls himself. Wouldn't he have protected you if he really cared? Many of my children still embrace this very same lie. My spirit desperately pursues their souls, but some still needlessly die. Long ago when I hung on that cross, I beheld this very day when born again vessels of mine would access my power to drive demons away. I knew that the very blood dripping from my brow you would one day trust in 
to demolish previous vows. Let your life be a witness for all the world to see how the precious blood of Jesus defeated the lies of the enemy. Teach them to call on that same blood, for I, for that blood still calls out their name. I have already destroyed the works of the devil. Tell them I am not to blame. Luke twenty two thirty one. and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you like wheat. So the Lord gave that to me many years ago. That's one of the first poems that he gave me. Um, and he speaks to me in that rhyme song, you know, kind of thing. And I never was a poetry person or a poetry lover by any means. Um, not that there's anything wrong with poetry, but that's just how the Lord speaks to me kind of in rhyme. So at the end of that poem, I sat still sobbing like, wow, you were really there. You know, um, the woods was one of the places that I was sexually abused in. And I'm not even going to cry. Come on. Anyway, so, and you know, it's funny because I buried all this stuff so very deep many years ago. Okay. And the Holy Spirit wants us to see it. He wants us to see it. He wants you to look at it the way he sees it. All right. And, and he wants you to see his tears for you. Boy, I hate when I cry like this because I have no idea when I'm going to cry. But anyway, okay, Lord. Um, so he wants you to see that he was there. That he didn't leave. Okay, that he didn't turn you over to the enemy. That somebody else's will violated you. Okay, so you have to forgive that person, obviously. But he wants you to see his love for you. And we can't see that love for, for us because... We've constructed walls of bitterness, hurt, shame, self-defense. Okay, we've got so many walls up that we can't see him standing there. We can't see him reaching out to us, letting us know that, hey, I was there. I was there on that day that that happened. You didn't see me, but I was there. And at that very moment, you vowed never to trust in me again. If you didn't even have a little small flicker of hope that there was a God, that very act of violence or fill in the blank caused you to turn away from me altogether. That's a lie. Okay. Satan is a liar. He is the father of all lies. All right. And every lie in our life, every bitterness, every root of bitterness, he is the author of those lies. So, if you're a Christian, you're born again. If you're not, you better jump on board. But if you are a born again believer, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, longing to speak to you, longing to share with you the truth of what really happened, the details of that day. Okay, he was there. He was there. He's always there. He's in yesterday. He's in today. He's in tomorrow. He's infinite. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knows everything. Let him show you exactly what he thinks of you as his child. And he will. And it will bring you to your knees. Because for many years, we accuse him of not being there. And his love will blow you away. I mean, it's just like his grace and his love is so all-consuming that it takes our breath away when we really realize who he is in our lives and what the enemy's schemes were to keep us from knowing and embracing that love and that grace okay i hope that helps in letting you guys know what to journal about um i also have my Bible and I'll get a scripture out, like I told you, um, you know, and, and I'm not good at memorization. So you'll see me spout out scripture, but I don't know that, I don't know that, you know, Romans such, I don't, because of my ADD. Okay. I don't know how I can't, you know, it's like my kids, we used to do uh, vacation Bible school and I would say, okay, this is, you got to memorize this. I know the scripture in my heart, 
In my heart, I have hidden that scripture. Bible says that I might not sin against you, but just know the word. You know the word. You don't have to focus on where this came from because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance. And that's in the book of John. <laughs> I like know which book it comes from, but I can't tell you which, exactly which verse and stuff. I know my favorite verse is Romans 8, 28. That's my favorite scripture that God causes all things to work together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And we are called according to his purpose. And this is the final generation, guys. We are blessed and honored and pre-selected, hand-selected by God to be in this final generation. Okay, and it is an awesome privilege. So ask him, God, what do you want me to do? Okay? And usually it comes by journaling. Give him a book. I mean, give him a page and he will write a book or two or three. All right. He has a lot to say. I mean, I was surprised at what the wealth of information that he wanted to share with me that for someone who didn't even believe that he was real. All right. I love you guys. Um, know that I'm praying for you and yours always daily and your prodigal covering you guys in prayer and praying that God will give each of you wisdom because the bible says if any man lacks wisdom let him come to me and i will give him wisdom okay not the kind of wisdom that we earthly wisdom it's spiritual wisdom from on high from the father himself all right because we need that so desperately in these final moments okay look unto jesus christ the author and finisher of our faith i love you guys um Hope that helped. Until next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.